This episode of the Internet Today is sponsored by Feels. Okay, it's been a bit of a rocky road for the next in a long line of Indiana Jones films. Uh, the latest movie, it would be the fifth in the series, following three of the most amazing films of the 80s, and one from 2008 that a lot of people would just rather forget. A stain. On the legacy. Yeah. Uh, two very important, consistent things through all of the films, though, uh, were Harrison Ford starring as Indiana Jones and Steven Spielberg directing. That all changed this week when news broke that Steven Spielberg would be stepping down as director on the fifth installment in the film franchise after previously being confirmed for the job since it was originally announced back in 2016. Now, like we said, this isn't the first issue that the film has run into. It was originally slated to debut back in July of 2019. Whoops. Obviously, that never happened. And after that, it was pushed until Gi July of this year, and then finally delayed once again for a release date of 2021 after the film had switched screenwriters from David Kep to Jonathan Kasdan, the guy who wrote Solo, A Star Wars Story, and son of Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote Raiders of the Lost Ark, as well as Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Nepotism, baby, it works. It does work. Yeah. Well, not, not for Max Landis, but it did for a while. It did for a while. Now, the major worry uh, with this is... Uh, I mean, at least for us, since the new Indiana Jones was initially announced, was that somehow uh, Harrison Ford would once again be starring in the film despite being 77 years old. Okay, he was a few years younger when it was announced, but still pretty old. Not saying he couldn't do it, and not saying that the movie would suck because of that, or that they should find a new Indiana Jones entirely. Maybe just not make another Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, how about yeah. that? You tried it after the original trilogy, and... And look what happened. Mm -hmm. Although, yeah, I did make a lot of money. Yeah, listen, the dude is 77 years old and, and starring in an action movie at that age, it has to be somewhat of a grueling ordeal. Uh, he's also not getting any younger, especially now that the film might be delayed again because the production is going to be shuffling in a new director. Even if they started filming it right now, he would be almost 80 years old when it's released. And I don't know, we really just don't want to see a Harrison Ford character uh, retired on screen again. You know what that means. Yeah. Or, I mean, it would be even worse if they used that de-aging technology on him to make it appear that he was even younger. Because who are you fooling? Yeah. But we have no idea what the hell the movie's going to be about. So, who knows? Could be a proper send-off. Could be anything. Could be a... Not to spoil it, but a Blade Runner 2049 sort of situation where it's like, yeah, Deckard's in the movie. Yeah. But... Sure. It's I think it's fine, to, it's fine to spoil Blade Runner 2049 <laughs> now. You are in a safe space. He shows up in, like, Act 3. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, yeah, it is just weird to think about an Indiana Jones movie with a lead actor who's old enough to be a great-grandfather doing stunts. He is older than Sean Connery was as Indiana Jones' dad in the third Indiana Jones movie no, by, the, like, 20 years. What's going to happen is Indiana Jones' son is going to come and murder him. Yeah. Yes. Spoilers. For, for Star Wars, for Star like, Wars. Uh, the first in the new trilogy. <laughs> Regardless, let's just get back to the latest news about the movie. So recently, Harrison Ford was doing some press for his latest film, which looks ridiculous. <laughs> the Call of the Wild, where uh, he was asked about Indiana Jones 5, and he was quoted as saying that filming was all set to start in about two months. Uh, but a, another interview cast doubt on that by telling them that Indiana Jones 5 was dealing with scheduling issues and a few script things. Yeah, so outside of those scheduling issues and script things, whatever those are, uh, the project is now also dealing with a director swap. And while it would be safe to assume that the project would be doomed after news that Spielberg was dropping out, at the very least, the replacement that they're trying to get sparks a few glimmers of hope. According to Variety, quote, sources say while a deal hasn't closed, Ford v. Ferrari director James Mangold is in talks to take the job. Mangold has been put in this situation before when he took over the Wolverine franchise. 2017's Logan was a blockbuster, grossing $619 million globally, and earning Mangold an Oscar nomination for adapted screenplay. So yeah, I mean, things could be worse. At least Mangold has a track record of taking over a project and turning it into literally the best thing possible. If he could do to Indiana Jones what he did with the Wolverine franchise, there is hope. Yeah, that would be tight. Yeah. Also, Harrison Ford, he's still on board to reprise his role. But, uh, you know, they, they should really get started soon or else, well, I mean, I'll just kind of feel bad watching this movie and watching him try to jump, fight, kick, and tumble around on screen for our enjoyment. Well, it'll, it, every fight scene will be the scene from Raiders where he just shoots the person. Yeah, true. <laughs> I just don't want it to be uh, uh, like <laughs> the Irishman. 
where it's like he's yeah. so stiff because he's so old and trying to do any kind of like fight just seems yeah. literally unbelievable. So, I don't know. Yeah. It, the movie's not going to be good. But anyway, <laughs> another huge industry shakeup news. Pretty much everyone was caught off guard early this week when it was announced that Bob Iger would be stepping down and replaced as Disney CEO effective immediately. I mean, it's not incredibly shocking considering that Iger had publicly stated that he would retire as early as 2021. But it came a little early, abruptly, and there was basically no transitional period between him and his replacement, Bob Chappick, who has already stepped into the role after heading up the Walt Disney Parks and Resorts Department for the past five years. So why is Iger gone all of a sudden? Well, there's a lot of rampant speculation going on uh, online. A lot of people are assuming that he's like deathly ill or something like that. He's running for president. <laughs> That's what you seem to think. Bloomberg, they, they, the, the oligarchs, they tried Bloomberg. The ship it's, has sailed. It's not playing well with the plebs. But you know what everyone loves? Disney. Yeah. They like Star Wars. They like Mickey Mouse. They like Iron Man. You guys like that? Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to love Bob Iger as your next president. Uh, anyways, yes, a lot of rampant speculation, including Elliot's uh, presidential bid that he's made for him. We'll see. Now, there's no real official statement as to the reasoning that we've found. So, I don't know, let's just speculate even further. Now, th in my opinion, this might have been the perfect time for Iger to step down. He'd already planned on retiring within the next year anyway. Why stick around? He already oversaw the, all of the big acquisitions, mm. Star Wars, Marvel, the big Fox merger, Disney Plus was launched successfully, and it continues to perform quite well. The Avengers series already had a, its big finale, uh, and Disney World, as well as Disneyland, both successfully launched Galaxy's Edge, which was the biggest project in the parks for the past couple of years. Yeah, the Fox merger is probably the biggest one. Yeah, I would say so. That and launching Disney Plus. It's, yeah. That, that's like a big feather in the cap. Yeah. And in addition to the positives, now is probably a great time to go out on top, considering the problems that the company is facing at this very moment. Uh, Pixar has a new movie coming out that could do great, but it's a brand new IP, so there's some risk there. But the worst problem is the company currently facing, it is, along with every other company yeah. in the world, uh, they're all dealing with the coronavirus. So yes, the coronavirus might be a big reason why he chose this moment to step down. Uh, Shanghai Disney closed down because of the spread in China, and one of their new live-action reboots, Mulan, is being released next month in China and worldwide. Uh, that movie's banking extra hard on the Chinese market, though. Obviously. And considering the quarantines that are in place, not only in China, but around the world, the box office take for that film could be a disaster, regardless of how good the movie is. And I, I think just like the parks in general, even the ones outside of China. People are nervous about People going, yeah. are going to think twice. Before yeah, especially now that it's coming that. to America. Yeah. Uh, might, uh, might freak people out a little mm -hmm. bit. Now, the other problem is Disney's stock. For the reasons that we just mentioned, Disney stock is currently tanking. And it's not just them. The whole stock market is down because of the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, if he didn't leave now, it might continue to sink. Uh, then if he stuck to his 21 departure or 2021 departure date, he could very well be leaving the company behind in the worst possible position after years of big financial wins. So yeah, while this might seem like a mystery to some, it seems like a perfect time to leave for us. Uh, well, see you. Yeah, like... That's the thing. The, the stock's tanking. It's not necessarily Disney's fault that it's tanking. Everything's tanking. He's already had so many wins throughout his career as CEO. Leave now. If you're going to leave anyway, it's a great time to do it. Uh, but anyways, about his replacement, Bob Chappick. How's he going to do? Well, since he's just getting started, if Disney can weather this coronavirus storm, the stock and finances, they will eventually rebound. And he'll probably be along, around long enough to enjoy some credit for that, even if he does nothing. And it's just a correction across the board. Plus, Disney's going to save a lot of money having to only scrape off half of uh, Bob Iger's name on his door. Yeah, the box. And his parking space. They mm -hmm. can leave the Bob part, pass the savings on to the shareholders. Exactly. So, uh, Anyways, he, he online in the Disney communities, he seems like a very bad pick. Uh, a lot of people say that he actually stifled progress within the parks when he was in charge of them. Uh, most notably, he made uh, apparently a ridiculous amount of cuts to Galaxy's Edge, both in Florida and here in California. So who knows? Who knows? Speaking of paying the bills, though, it's time to take a quick break to relax and chill and thank today's sponsor, Fields. Mm -hmm. So do you experience stress or have anxiety or chronic pain or I don't, maybe you just have trouble sleeping at least once a week? You are not alone. Many of us do. Once you hit 30, life is kind of just pain. 
but yeah. like not even consistent pain, just mm -hmm. different types yeah. constantly. Now, personally, after staring at a computer screen all day like we do, we have a lot of trouble going to sleep. And a good night of sleep is the most vital thing needed to improve your life. But we were able to try out Feels recently, and it has helped us get the quality sleep that we need. Yes, Feels is premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. Feels naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. All you do is place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. Feels works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high, hangover, or addiction. Now, finding the correct dose of CBD is it's important, and everyone is different. So, you know, make sure to start slow, find out what works for you, and uh, then you can get comfortable with it. And mm -hmm. if you're new to CBD, Feels offers real human support with a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience. Their starter kit is very helpful. Yes, they give you a, they let you a take certain like nice milligram yeah. to do, but uh, I just dump the whole thing. If, I, if I can't get to sleep, having a little insomnia, just dump it in. Yeah. yeah. So join the Feels community today to get Feels CBD delivered to your door every month. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Feels has us feeling our best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash newsdump. That's F-E-A-L-S mm -hmm. dot com slash newsdump. You'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. F-E-A-L-S feels.com slash newsdump to become a member and get 50% off automatically for your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash newsdump. Thank you, Feels. All right, now let's get back into the news with an update on one of our longest running stories, the college admission scandal. Ah, oh, jeez. As you're all very aware, our former boss, the president of Machinima, Stephen Sempervivo, was sentenced back in September of last year and, as far as we're aware, is still serving his time in prison. Yeah. But he's expected to get uh, released sometime within the next month or so. No. After which, he'll be on probation for two years and have to do a bunch of community service. I cannot wait to honk when I see yeah. him on the side of the road picking up trash. It's going to be great. Very, very satisfying. Yeah, that's, that's good to think about. Uh, Aunt Becky from Full House, she's still awaiting trial, and her sentence might be incredibly substantial, considering she did not take a plea deal and instead pled not guilty. This would have been over for her six months ago. Yeah. If she'd just been like, yeah, we did it. Yeah, she would have been like in and out of prison in yeah. like two weeks. Felicity Huffman. Like Felicity Huffman. Yeah. I think she, she was sentenced to two weeks and might have gotten out even a little earlier than that. Well, that's the thing. Going to prison in California, they're like, listen. It's crowded. You don't have space. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, this week we got news of another parent involved in the scandal and what she's going to be facing. That's right. So, Hot Pockets heiress... I'm heiress to the Hot heiress Pockets fortune. <laughs> and it is a fortune. It is. They it's... sold, uh, Hot Pockets <laughs> sold to Nestle uh, uh, 20 years ago or so for uh -huh. billions of dollars. Yeah. Billions. That's... So, yes, it, it is funny it, to think about. It might be relatively new money, but there's a lot of money in those Hot Pockets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so the Hot Pockets heiress, Michelle Janovs, whose family invented the microwavable snack that is enjoyed by millions of hardcore gamers worldwide. <laughs> was sentenced to five months in prison and a $250,000 fine for paying $300,000 to Rick Singer in order to get her daughters into college. I love that they find her almost exactly the amount that she paid into it, which is great. I think that's justified. Sure. Now, in her case, prosecutors sought nearly two years in prison and her lawyers requested probation, so this is kind of middle ground. The judge presiding over the case said probation was out of the question adding that Janice deserved prison for, quote, deliberately corrupting the college admissions system. There you go. And also, quote, not a real quote. Your food's weird. <laughs> Burn my mouth on that shit. I was Lock just going to say, yeah, <laughs> she deserves to go to prison for a while for burning the mouths of millions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ice cold. On It's either ice cold on the inside yeah. or it's too hot when you bite oh! it. It's just lava. <laughs> Yeah, you spit it all over and the place. They, and she's responsible for us doing that terrible streaming event where we did uh, eight hours in a row uh, at the uh, the eSports arena down in Santa Ana. I forgot about that. They're like, that. no, you guys have to work two days in a row, uh, eight to 12 hours a day with no breaks. Can't even use the bathroom. But here's some Hot Pockets. And the only food available was Hot Pockets. Yeah, true. So that was weird. So anyway, uh, did it. Did it. Another one bites the dust. And now we're kind of just waiting to see how Lori Lachlan <laughs> fares because as we've said, she could be going away for a very, very long time, all things considered. Yeah. Now Massimo is not going to have that big revival like all the other 90s brands. Yeah. Hate to I mean, see I'm it. assuming he's up for some prison as well if this goes sideways. He can have a little bit of prison as a treat. <laughs> Anyways, it's uh, it's been almost a, a, a full month since the highly controversial Super Bowl halftime show featuring Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. And in the days that immediately followed, we certainly saw a hell of a lot of backlash online and... Uh, Specifically from that guy, Coach Dave, who said he was suing the NFL uh, because it made God very angry. Yeah. He, he's trying to stop us, or the Super Bowl is trying to stop us all from getting into heaven. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but now we finally have access to a whole bunch of actual complaints that were filed with the Federal Communications Commission thanks to a Freedom of Information Act request from a local Texas ABC affiliate. So uh, let's check uh, some of these out uh, and see what regular old non-Coach Dave, not armchair critics online, regular old salt-of-the-earth Americans thought of this year's big Super Bowl halftime show. So a viewer from Croswell, Michigan wrote, Really? An R-rated halftime show? I chose to not go see the R-rated movie Hustler, but did not expect to see mo so much nastiness on TV. To bend over and show that thin piece of fabric between her butt cheeks crossed the line. It wasn't a concert. It was a football game being broadcast into my home by a local station by the airwaves B for families to watch together. How rude and obscene. It wasn't the beach or a resort. It was my living room. <laughs> Listen, when I want to see some butt crack, I go down to the beach <laughs> I go down or the, to the resort beach. with my binoculars. Yeah, I don't pay the admission. <laughs> yeah, and I don't bring my family no. because the beach is for sinners like me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone from Little Rock, Arkansas wrote, Why is it okay for these entertainers, J-Lo and Shakira, to prance around grabbing their genitals on national television? I don't want my kids imitating that behavior. Do you guys really condone this crap? A person watching in Franklin, Tennessee wrote in saying, this year's Super Bowl halftime show exceeded the bounds of decency. Even my 28-year-old son was worried for children who might have been watching. The costumes, the pole dancing, the constant crotch grabbing were not appropriate for a family-oriented event. I have no problem watch, teach, and have worked in adult content TV. <laughs> okay. But this was too much. Next year, tone it down. What? I need more information about My adult places. son was offended by my this. My large adult son. Who, as indicated by this... Uh, by this report, uh, doesn't have children of his own, but is worried about the children of others. Yeah, right. how selfless. If this uh, if this offends my adult son, who grew up in a household where I was working in adult content, yeah. is offended, <laughs> then it probably offended everyone. Must have been pretty offensive, yeah. Uh, a viewer in Arnold, Maryland said, whoever greenlit that display of crotch shots and too much skin exposed along with stripper poles and S&M outfits should be fired. It's 8.30 p.m. Kids are still up watching the game. What the hell? I'm sure that there are lots of parents explaining that's not really how one should behave in public. Is this really what we can expect? I'm out. I don't watch porn, and I don't want it mixed up with football. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. Boo the FCC. <laughs> yeah. Someone from Issaquah, Washington said, My family was very excited to watch the Super Bowl tonight. However, I was not prepared to explain to my 11-year-old daughter why Jennifer Lopez was dressed so scantily or why she kept grabbing her crutch. My daughter was asking if she was feeling sick from having so much skin showing. That's, what, that's, what? How, you get, that's how you get sick. Mommy, is she well, that, getting sick? That's what? An, that, that might be an indication that her parents uh, dress her like completely uh, covered from head to toe because it's like warning her that if you show any skin, even when you're an adult, if you wear scantily clad clothes, yeah. it's way easier to get sick. I Could be. Now, a true patriot from Grovertown, Indiana stated, the Super Bowl halftime show was gross. I am 50 and ashamed I saw that evil crap on TV. What about all the children that watched that? Then J-Lo had the American flag touch the ground. <laughs> there should be millions of dollars in fines. <laughs> I love how that was the most offended part. Like, what? I saw it. The flag yeah. touched the ground. It's time to burn it. Pay up. Can't believe someone would do Stop that. Stop the halftime show. We need to do, we need to burn that flag in the proper uh, ceremonial way and send the ashes to the local, like, VA hospital where exactly. they do something with it. Also, for good measure, here is some more random excerpts from various complaints. It is not appropriate family viewing to see pole dancing, crotch grabbing, and extreme booty shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, leather pants fully exposing butt cheeks, pole dancing, twerking, simulated orgies, and sexual gyrations, crotch grabs, and pelvic thrusts were all in front of my family and friends. Women wanted to be respected? Bull crap. They just want attention. The close-ups of J-Lo's vagina and anus was chucky. <laughs> I did not like that anus. It was yucky. <sighs> that one had, like, their kid right in. Yeah. You tell them what you thought, what daddy said that you thought. Here's another one. We live in eastern Kansas but have no TV, thus took our nine-year-old daughter to our local small-town sports bar <laughs> to watch the game. What? She's a farm girl, so understands sex, but could not stop asking, Mama, what's all this? Totally confused. And as she emerges into her young womanhood, absolutely abused. We took our daughter to a bar. Sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, she's seen the animals fuck on the <laughs> farm. It's part of her job. 
But the, watching this halftime show was literally abuse. You yeah. abused my child, who I took to a bar. Also, I know it's not Fox's fault, but people uh, accidentally flicked cigarette ashes on her and spilled beer all over because we took yeah. her to a sports bar. Yeah. Uh, next one. From start to finish, both Shakira and J-Lo did nothing but cause harm to our society. Why do we have to be subjected to seeing her ugly 51-year-old anus and vagina when we want to watch football? It's so anatomical. I love it. They're like, why don't you get a younger, hotter person up there to show me their anus? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next one. Are you telling children they have to wave their assholes and crotches around with a bullseye on them to be talented singers? I like, I don't know. I watched it and I was like, this is, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. There's dancers. Yeah. There's costume changes. There's acrobatics. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's obviously a little sexual, but yeah, sure. there's a lot of talented dancing and performing going on. These people watch the Super Bowl and they're like, there it is, anus. Well, the, so there it is, there's a vagina. Lot, there's, there's also like, the, the, listen, all, full disclosure, I don't have kids, but here's the thing is like, I highly doubt that any of these kids are like questioning what the fuck is going on. No. They just see a bunch of like dancing and musical numbers and like colors and songs. And it's like, the parents are the ones being like, oh, God, and yeah. you shouldn't see this. And it's like, oh, well, why shouldn't I see it? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Again, I'm sure people raise their kids in different ways. How, how about because this is uh, such a yearly event where the halftime show always offends you, just put uh, on the puppy bowl. Yeah, put on the puppy bowl or take them over to the kitchen to get some food or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, here's some more comments. Next time, just show Robert Kraft's massage parlor videos. <laughs> That's yeah, a good, that's a good. might be a I troll, like that, yeah. that's good. Uh, next, uh, if I want to see that, I will take my wife and children to a strip club. Good, my parenting. Ten <laughs> good parenting going on. My 10-year-old declared 30 seconds into the program, this is not kids' bop material. No. Okay. It's not. Uh, anyways, look, we, we actually found a good one, though, in all of this. Here it is. I was watching the Super Bowl, and all of a sudden, I'm bombarded with Shakira's tongue and her hips. And it was awesome. Former Deadspin folks, fight on. The actual FCC complaint filed. Right. Yeah. Nice. Well, cool. Anyway, if you want to read through the more than 1,300 complaints, I don't know why you would. <laughs> it that, took me a long time to find all this. That's how many were sent to the FCC. Yeah. There's a link down in the description. Enjoy. Yeah. In the meantime, check out our exclusive podcast. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you're a member of our Patreon yeah. or a YouTube member, check that out. Um, and two of our most recent episodes over there. Don't write the FCC about our coverage of the hentai cam girl, though. We're just reporting on it. Yeah, we're not, uh, like, yeah. endorsing it or showing also, the Also, actual... I don't think they really have much authority over us. True. I could be wrong. Uh, well, you might be wrong. Let's not find out. Yeah. Check out our other episodes. Uh, don't file any FCC complaints, and we'll see you next time. Bye.